So, well, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. I would recommend you to mute ourselves so that the speaker, there's no any background noise for the speakers. Um, I will also invite you to write down your name on the attendee list. Thank you very much. My name is Maria Merlam. Uh, I work in Proxima. For those who don't know me, um, today I'm hosting this ROS2 Embedded Working Group meeting. Um, the document I am sharing with you uh, gathers the detailed agenda for today. Um, well, we can see as a recapitulation uh, the agenda of the Embedded Working Group in March. We had two demos conducted by my colleague Pablo uh, about uh, the first Texas in microcontroller port to MicroROS. Um, there was a co uh, live demo. Uh, the main features and explanation of the build system was presented, and also another live demo of ROS Rider status and the challenges of using MicroROS in 32K of RAM. These two live demos are available in this video here for those who could not attend and might be interested. And for today, um, we have a very interesting presentation from Bosch, Germany. So Suraj Rao <laughs> will present uh, the results of his master, of, uh, master thesis research. So he will be covering um, several topics, um, an approach for mapping the microrocks, microrocks execution scheme to fix periodic scheduling in, in AutoSAR, Classic. Um, he will be reporting some results and also a technique for performance modeling and model based timing analysis of micro applications on such systems. And then the, there will be time for questions and answers uh, after Suraj's presentation. And uh, to finish, I will make a, a quick um, introduction. This um, PowerPoint will summarize the whole life of microros from a high level point of view. So we will see where the microros framework is coming from. It's actually a European funding project and how it has transitioned uh, through having a community and having market um, products uh, today available in the industry. So there will be also uh, time for questions and answers. Um, also, if, you, if the attendees wish to treat any further topic, we, you can add them in the miscellaneous section at the end of this document, and they will be discussed at the end of the meeting if we have time. So I think we can get started with the first part of the session. I don't know if Jan or Suraj will start. Yep. Whenever you are ready, you can share your screen. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Maria, for the introduction. I'll just present my screen. Oh. Okay. I hope everyone can see my screen now. Yes, can. Okay. Okay, uh, so good evening all. I am a master thesis uh, student from University at Stuttgart who did my master thesis at Robert Bosch Renningen campus. I would like to now welcome everyone to my master thesis presentation titled Modeling and Timing Analysis of Micro ROS Application on an Off-Road Vehicle Control Unit. As we all know, ROS is of great importance mainly for the service uh, robot domains that includes nowadays the autonomous driving and also the off-road sector. Accordingly, there is a significant interest in bringing the micro ROS stack to typical automotive control units. So the main goal of the thesis is to bring the micro ROS client stack on such automotive ECUs. To begin with, I start with the motivation and the introduction on the topic, then explain the problem statement in detail and the goal of my thesis. 
followed by the research objectives that are formulated with respect to supporting the micro raw stack on autosar based embedded platforms uh, further explain in detail the concept development and also the contribution of thesis by answering these research objectives then explain how the developed concept was evaluated by implementing a micro ROS test application on an off-road vehicle control unit by Bosch Rexroth. Finally, would like to discuss the results and summarize the conclusions and findings from this thesis work. As we all know, ROS, the robot operating system, it is the most common middleware that is being used in the development of software in modern day robots, mainly because of its four features, uh, plumbing, uh, that is where it supports mainly the process management and supporting communication between uh, the processes to exchange various types of data, uh, support for low level device drivers and language independent development. Then the second feature that's the tools support for uh, visualization, monitoring, recording of data, simulation, etc. And the capabilities for the control, perception, navigation, path planning algorithms. And finally, the last feature, the ecosystem. That's the contributors are spread across the world with the shared development, very well document and, and it really has a good market. ROS uh, with all this distinctive features still had its uh, certain limitations like it was supported under Linux only and mostly the applications in academic research, etc, which led to the development of next version. That's ROS 2. Uh, it primarily focused on five objectives. Uh, the support for uh, multi robot systems involving unreliable network. Uh, remove the gap between the prototyping and final product. The cross platform support. Uh, support for real-time features and support on microcontrollers. Apart from this, it uses the industry standard DDS data distribution service as its middleware. In principle, it could achieve the first three objectives other than these two. So in this thesis, we mainly focus on its support for microcontrollers. Hence, we have micro ROS, a variant of ROS2 that is mainly tailored for resource constraint devices like microcontrollers that feature a few kilobytes of RAM only. Uh, as we all know, this is the architecture of micro ROS. In ROS2, we have uh, DDS as middleware. Here we have micro XRC DDS middleware uh, that helps in enabling the services to run on microcontrollers uh, in the client library uh, we have additional functions that are supported by the executor to enable deterministic and real-time behavior uh, as we all know micro ROS has been developed as a part of EU funded project Ophera. Uh, it is an open source development with source code available at the following github repository as mentioned earlier uh, the main goal of the thesis is to bring the micro ROS client stack on automotive ECUs. Hence, we have chosen an ECU from Bosch Rexroth, uh, which is a 32 bit multi core processor with 300 megahertz clock frequency, 1 MB SRAM, and with support for CAN LIN uh, communication protocols. Uh, the software that is running on it is Autosar Classic OSEC operating system. Now, with such development, we could use all the nice ROS2 features explained before on such microcontrollers. The architecture on the right is of micro ROS as shown in the previous slide. Now we update it as per the hardware we have chosen. We don't have a POSIX operating system. So therefore the challenge mainly is to bring the executor according to the Autosar OSIC operating system on such ECU. Then we would like to also support the exchange of information via CAN based on the custom transport configuration in the middleware. So to start with the analysis of micro ROS and Autosar classic framework at the conceptual level reveals the fundamental differences as shown here. Uh, mapping the component model from micro ROS to Autosar classic is well supported by Autosar tooling. The key challenge in mapping the two operating systems is the scheduling scheme. This aspect will be addressed as a part of execution management in thesis. Uh, in a recent work by another master students, the communication and safety aspects have been addressed. So in this thesis work, we mainly focus on the execution and the memory management. Uh, execution model for micro ROS uh, follows an event driven approach based on executors, whereas for Autosar, it incorporates a fixed periodic preemptive scheduling scheme. 
and AutoSAR also assumes uh, the static memory usage in opposition to micro ROS where initialization phase requires dynamic memory allocation. On the left side, uh, what we have is the executor concept in ROS2, the executor which mainly handles the coordinate, which mainly coordinates the execution of all the callbacks, the data here is received via the defined transport and the middleware puts the data into the DDS queue. The executor looks up the wait states which notifies it about the available messages from the DDS queue. It takes the message and processes the corresponding callback until completion in a sequential order. Whereas the execution management in AutoSAR Classic OSEC like operating system running on BODAS controller uses fixed periodic scheduling scheme in which the functions are defined and assigned to periodic tasks like one millisecond, 10 millisecond, etc. Each function runs into completion and stores all the state for the next run in the static global memory. Tasks with shorter period always preempt the other task, but they share the same stack. Therefore, the whole system uses the single stack only. Therefore, in ROS2, the tasks now implemented as callbacks will be executed until completion and then only the next message next message will be processed. Therefore, such a ROS2 executor concept cannot be applied on AutoSAR based platforms. So therefore, one of the main goals of this thesis work would be to bring the ROS2 execution management, which is event based to fixed periodic scheduling scheme in AutoSAR. Next, uh, talking with respect to about the modeling, as we all know, model based development methods have already proven their utility in automotive industry. Therefore, for any micro ROS application mapped to such architecture needs efficient analysis that would describe the characteristics of real time critical tasks in a model based approach. Currently, uh, there are no generic models that would describe the micro ROS architecture on AutoSAR based ECUs and the necessary modeling elements that would specify the timing properties of micro ROS stack on such a platform. Therefore, another another goal of this thesis work would be to model the timing behavior of micro ROS based applications on AutoSAR classic based ECUs for performance analysis. Now, to achieve these two research goals based on the based on the state of the art technologies and studying the existing related work, four specific research questions were formulated. The first question mainly tackles the handling of execution management. That is how to map the event based execution management of micro ROS to fixed periodic preemptive scheduling with a single stack like in AutoSAR. Question two to question four mainly concentrates on the modeling part. Like question two states, which are the modeling elements that are necessary to specify the characteristics of real time critical micro ROS task, including the processing chains. Then question three, how do you describe such timing characteristics of the stack and also an application in such a model on a specific microcontroller and can existing meta models be reused? And fourth question, how precisely does the model which is developed allow to predict the computing latencies using an approach? appropriate simulation tool. So from the evaluation perspective, we would like to also implement a simple micro ROS test application on an AutoSAR based platform with a uh, control function which is running at one kilohertz and a concurrent communication workload of 50 hertz with a microprocessor running ROS2. The test application is also modeled using one of the standard modeling languages in automotive. The goals that are to be achieved are to guarantee the latency of one millisecond and uh, less than 0.5 millisecond jitter for the control function and to predict the latency by the timing model with a precision of around uh, 20 percent. Now uh, answering the first research question that is mainly mapping the execution management in ROS2 to AutoSAR the executor and the callback functions have to be mapped to periodic tasks in AutoSAR. The executor function must be assigned to a task which is executing at a period which is equal or less than the least period among the tasks to which the callbacks are assigned. And here it will only serve as a dispatcher. The assignment of callbacks to periodic tasks mainly depends on two factors. One is the message rate and the second one will be the execution time of the callback. 
so talking about the message rate the callback related to the incoming message must be assigned to a task executing at a same or a lower period than the incoming message interval so that none of the messages are lost talking about the execution time of the callback the callback now must be assigned to a task executing at a higher period than its execution time so that it has enough time for computation another important factor that has to be considered from the user perspective is the desired latency like even if the occurrence of the message is very rare if the reaction time has to be quick then it has to be put to a high frequency task and the user is allowed to mention it so it's the decision left to the developer to take such decision so now the mapping of such ROS2 scheme would something look like this where the data is received via the defined transport the middleware task which is now running in a high frequency task unpacks the data into a xrc dds message the executor function which is running in either the same frequency as the middleware task or at a lower frequency takes the incoming xrc dds message and will make it available for the corresponding callback but the very important factor here is the callback function is not invoked immediately but it is executed in tasks often at lower frequencies than the executor. So uh, in general, talking about the execution management, but when you talk about the execution of any micro ROS application, it can be divided into two phases. One is the operation phase, which handles the execution management. But before that, we have the initialization phase, which handles the creation of core entities of an application. As we all know, uh, in the micro ROS client stack, the middleware micro XRC DDS is based on DDS communication model in which node, topic, publisher, subscriber, data writer and data reader form the core entities. Now, these entities have to be created in the client with the support of an agent. Uh, in case of POSIX compliant RTOS, each entity's request response is handled by a uh, separate thread in a blocking function call. Such a concept is not supported on uh, Autosar based platforms, which is non POSIX compliant. Therefore, we would like to uh, use a state machine model approach mainly to avoid these blocking function calls. And in such a model, the transition between the states is handled by updating the respective global variables in every task cycle. So, in this approach, mainly for each entity creation in the client, two states are considered. In the first state, what we have is called the entity request state. The request for a particular entity creation is checked and sent from the client. In the second state called the entity response state, the corresponding response from agent is acknowledged and decided whether to move to the next entity creation state or not. These steps will be repeated until all the entities that are mentioned here are created in the sequential order and also to support such a state machine model like approach in the middleware subsequent api function calls in the above layers of the micro ROS client software stack needs to be also analyzed and adapted in addition the functions in these layers of the stack are dependent on certain uh, standard c library functions and also the posex functions Therefore, the support for these missing standard C library functions and mapping the POSIX functions based on the chosen platform must be developed. So now uh, that completes the answer to the first research question. Now talking about the second research questions. So uh, the question two and question three, we would like to answer mainly in three steps. So in the first step, we list all the properties that influence the characteristics of micro ROS application and develop a generic uh, performance model for micro ROS independent of the modeling language. In the second step, we decide for one of the modeling languages in automotive and model the generic performance model using such a language. And finally, in the third step, we simulate the timing behavior of such a system model with a performance analysis tool. And in our case, we have chosen Crohn's suit as the performance analysis tool. So by such a generic approach, one could in future apply the generic model to different modeling languages and also to performance analysis tools. So as a first step, we mentioned we listed all the timing properties. Now, these listed properties had to be grouped. 
so that it would help us to know the minimum number of models that would be necessary describing the timing behavior of a micro ROS application on an AutoSAR based platform. Therefore, with the main objective to abstract the execution timing behavior of the entire middleware into a single execution time, the properties were grouped into three individual necessary models. The application model were the properties that the user is allowed to define and the generic micro ROS model on board us, the properties that is specific to micro ROS and finally the hardware model, the properties that is specific to hardware platform. And so from the properties listed here, we could easily tell that the number of processing cores and memory size could be associated to hardware model. The OS scheduling policy and the task period is defined. Hence, it could be associated to generic micro ROS model on board us. From the modeling perspective, the middleware, which also includes the executor function is mandatory in every micro ROS application and could be associated to a generic micro ROS model on board us. Finally, from the application developer perspective, the number of subscriptions and the publishers based on the application design must be known and hence it could be associated to the application model. Now, uh, as we said, the properties were listed and now we have three uh, generic models. So finally, uh, we could see all the three uh, models here with their associated properties and relations between relationships between them. And we could uh, term it as a generic performance model. Uh, the execution time, that's the callback parameter for the subscriptions, publishers and the middleware. Um, has to be measured by the profiling method on the chosen platform. Hence, it is dependent on the hardware model. So based on this execution time, as explained initially, the frequency parameter could be mapped to corresponding uh, property in the task period. And finally, the message size parameter depends on the data in the topic. Now, as a second step, uh, we said before, we choose Amaltia as the modeling language which we found it better when compared to the other modeling languages in automotive as mainly it supports the modeling of multi-core systems. So the system model in Amalthea combines various partial models, which includes hardware model, software model, timing model, etc. Such a model could be used to run a performance simulation, which results in the system timing behavior of the application. This is an example of a hardware data model and a software data model in Amalthea. Now, uh, as a next step, second step, we realize the generic performance model using the available Amalthea data models. We could describe all the timing properties and their parameters of each model using elements and sub elements in the data models of Amalthea. So hardware model, it was straight. It could be realized using the hardware data model in Amalthea, whereas the task period could be realized using the stimuli data model and OS scheduling policy could be realized using the operating system model. Now the middleware subscriptions and the publishers could be realized using the software data model in Amalthea and mapping model mainly helps in mapping these uh, tasks to schedulers. That is, it helps in linking the software model to the hardware data model. So finally, in the third step, the system model, which was developed here, could be simulated using one of the performance analysis tool, as I said, Crohn's suit in our case, and it helps in deriving the results on timing behavior of the application. Now, uh, as a use case, as I said, we choose one of the popular vehicle control units from Bosch Rexroth. Uh, so the complete micro ROS client stack was ported on this AutoSAR based platform on the left. What you see is the micro ROS agent stack running on a computer with Linux operating system. On the right is the micro ROS client stack on the Bodas ECU running AutoSAR OSEC like operating system with the existing base software. So each layer here is added in the ASW region step by step from the compatibility POSIX mapping layer to RCLC and RCLC layer. So therefore, with the analysis, concepts and implementation details explained an application developed with uh, such a micro ROS client framework can be ported on any AutoSAR based ECU with a simple configuration change related to the chosen hardware. 
as an example uh, we would like to also consider uh, consider a micro ROS test application with uh, two callbacks one of the callbacks is referred to as the control function which takes the input i and multiplies according to the factor f and we could see the result is seen at the output o this callback is associated with a uh, okay sorry yeah this callback is associated uh, to a executor and it is mainly associated with a timer and it is added to the executor and it is responsible to call the callback periodically at a rate of around one kilohertz the executor sorry uh yeah at a rate of one kilohertz the other callback referred to as the message factor callback which handles the updated uh, factor from the agent is mapped to a task running at 50 hertz so finally we have the executor which serves the middleware should be running at one kilohertz and it is referred to as executor task the agent that's the micro ROS agent is running on a lenovo t15 series laptop it sends the data containing a uh, information uh, regarding the factor via standard can and the rate at which it sends is around 50 hertz so uh, and then finally the test signal that's the input here is generated from the externally connected esp32 microcontroller and it also helps in signal validation as per the factor now this micro ROS test application is also modeled in Amalthea as explained before. So the system model is successfully validated for Incron specifications and using the AM to INC importer, it is converted to a timing model in Crone suit, which could be further used for simulation of timing behavior of the application. Now, uh, by simulating the timing model in crown suit, we would like to answer the fourth research question and all the test experiments on the BODAS hardware or the ESP32 or in the modeling perspective were all made to run for around five minutes. So here we would like to consider two approaches for modeling the execution time of the executor task. So in the first approach for the executor task, single execution time is considered irrespective of its variation in execution during the reception of message from the agent so the execution time then of each task is measured in isolation using the bodas api so in the next step similar to the execution time the response time of the control function which is executed as a timer callback is measured uh, initially as a baseline uh, we measured the average execution time of a empty 1 kilohertz and a 50 hertz task and we found it to be around 41 microseconds and 31 microseconds respectively hence for the model the execution time was exclu given excluding the baseline execution time was uh, it was given as input so the output was found to be around 16 microsecond so if we could include the baseline then the overall output was found to be around 57 microseconds so from the results it's clearly observable observable that there is an increase of around 16 percent in the response time value measured on bodas hardware this is because the control function callback is not running is not running independently on the bodas hardware that is it is executed as a timer callback whereas from the modeling perspective it is realized as an independent task without calling the timer therefore uh, the difference is mainly because of the additional overhead due to the timer for the control function task in the executor which is not considered in the model in the second approach referred to as the advanced model it is similar to the first approach but for the executor task two execution times are considered that is one during the message received from the agent and one during message not received from the agent accordingly an advanced model of the application is developed in detail regarding the micro ROS executor task and it is expected that this model predicts the better response time when compared to the first approach so the other uh, inputs whereas the that's the input regarding other tasks and to the model is similar to the first approach and we found that from the results uh, it was observed that there there was an increase of around uh, 0.65 microsecond when compared to the first approach this is because every 20 millisecond that at a rate of 50 hertz there is an increase in the execution time of executor task due to the reception of message from the agent 
so in our case since the message size was very small that is just a factor there is not significant increase in the execution time of executor task when it receives the message from the agent but in general the model predicted the better response time of the tasks and functions when the execution time of the executor is modeled in detail so also now uh, the next results as we had mentioned in the beginning one of the goals to be measured was regarding the jitter and the latency of the control function and we measured uh, externally using the esp32 hardware which was connected to the bodas ecu uh, the figure here depicts the uh, distributed latency of the control function without and with uh, the micro ROS uh, stack running uh, in a one kilohertz task. So from the results, it was uh, clearly observable that the numbers related to jitter and latency on ESP32 are quite high and it was distributed than the goals defined earlier because there was some high delays that was observed at the uh, IO subsystem of the BODAS hardware and it was also verified that there was no delay on the ESP32 side regarding the load uh, there is an increase of around 3% due to the micro ROS stack on the BODAS platform finally we wanted to also measure the end-to-end -end latency of a task chain from the experimental setup and the model we had so the end-to-end -end latency of a task chain is calculated as the time interval from the incoming new message received by the executor task to the update of signal by the control function task at the output uh, as per the factor which is received so to observe the minimum uh, average and maximum end-to-end -end latency of a task chain the message uh, from the agent is sent in an interval of 20 millisecond plus offset so this offset varies from 0 to 20 millisecond and uh, so these were the results which were observed on the borders and from the model and also on the esp32 so it is observed that the results uh, obtained on the borders and the simulation tool that's the model are almost same but as explained before the values on esp32 were quite high due to the high delays observed at the io subsystem of the borders hardware uh, so these are so finally i would like to bring the summary and the conclusions from this thesis work so here i would list the major uh, conclusions and summary is listed here but uh, talking about some of the major findings from this thesis work was from the application perspective that was not expected was the initialization phase so developing such a state machine model approach was one of the important steps and from the results we also realized that there were there was some high latencies that was observed at the board as io subsystem so this is an example where we can prove that how the lower layer of the lower level of the stack can influence the timing properties at the application level that ends my presentation on the topic and yeah thank you all for your time and yes we can have more discussions thank you very much Suraj. Yeah. And congratulations for your great work. Thank you so much. Yeah. So now it is time for any question or comment from the audience. Okay, so I'm sorry, I was printing here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if anyone has any comment or question, it can be also written on the meeting uh, minutes document. I uh, am. <laughs> As I mean, it can be answered afterwards. Okay. All right, then. So let's move on to the next section. And um, in this second part, um, we have 20 minutes left. And I'm going to proceed and present 
the last topic of the agenda, which relies on which are the origins of micro rocks with the intention of getting rocks to enhance. Um, and we will see also how it is impacting now in industrial robotics. Let me share my screen. Okay, can you please confirm that you are seeing my presentation? Yes, we can see. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So there are several um, attendees that are new uh, today in the meeting. So this would be a pretty good summary uh, to give some context of this framework because we will be telling how the microbes framework has been transitioned to the industry these days and how it, this is being maintained today as an open source project. So let's get started. As Suraj well indicated also in his presentation, the uh, microbes comes from the European funded project of FEDA. So this was a four years project, it's already finished. It was funded partially by the European Union and the organizations involved are Eproxima, Bosch, Fiber from Germany, and Fiat from Poland. I will quickly go through these four points during my presentation. So first of all, the mission of this framework, uh, the interoperability with ROS2 and the I will present very briefly the, the evolution, main highlights of the current status of the, of the existing community today. So, well, the mission of a fair project was to bridge the gap between microcontrollers and larger processors with micro ROS, and therefore achieve a seamless integration of microcontrollers in ROS2, is portability of the ROS2 code, and ensure long-term maintenance of the micro ROS stack. Therefore, this uh, is a solution to create the ROS2 nodes into the embedded devices, and this way, the embedded world becomes first-class participant of the ROS ecosystem. And it also reduces the cost and size of robotic platforms. Therefore, it accelerates a lot the development of new solutions in the, in the robotics industry because it, it facilitates uh, affordable deployments. So we can see that how ROS2 is getting enhanced with MicroROS because the result is um, a ROS2 that allows the combination of high-level systems with low-level systems, multi-sensor networks and edge robotics. And this is overcoming the existing challenges or the past existing challenges of, of ROS uh, framework. Now uh, we can tell that the uh, MicroROS framework is a mature and professional framework fully featuring ROS2 and provides reliability. Therefore, uh, we are seeing uh, several industrial endorsed prototypes uh, in the market and it will help to emerge new commercial solutions across many different sectors in the, in the industry. So in order to do to achieve uh, enhanced ROS2, the architecture needed to be layer by layer compatible with that of ROS2 to ensure modularity and total interoperability with the ROS2 ecosystem. Well, this slide shows the architecture of ROS2 with microbes, how they are connected. And you know the main difference between these two stacks are the user API and the middleware interface. And those differences precisely allows microbes to run in embedded devices and our EOSs. So I'll quickly go through this. Here we can present in a visual way within the Ophera project which are the layers and the responsibilities of each company. Uh, so you see the architecture and the company contribution. And starting at the bottom, Proxima uh, involves, well, it was in charge of how 
micro ROS and transports are supported in the RTO ATS and microcontrollers. The Proxima is a middleware expert and therefore develop uh, the middleware for the Opera project, embedded, dedicated, and transfer agnostic, uh, which is the micro XRCDDS middleware. Bosch it was in charge of the user APIs. How is this delivered to the user and how it is used? And also the RCLC real timeness. Uh, well, this is basically the architecture, although there has been more work involving the application components, benchmarking, communication, and dissemination, obviously. Um, okay, so now I would like to start with the, the general evolution of, of MicroRoS uh, during the past years. Um, it started, well, MicroRoS was endorsed directly by Open Robotics Foundation. Um, the members of the project um, belong to the technical stream committee. The embedded working group was also set up in, 20, in 2018 to formalize the visibility and the interest of, of progressing in this line of embedded robotics. And all this, all the work, generally speaking, those years was around ROS2 interoperability and generating adoption through the alignment with all ROS distribution releases, uh, Galactic, Foxy, Rolling, and now Humble, seeking and um, facilitating, facilitating use cases, both uh, by the community and also industrial endorsed. The ROS2 Embedded Working Group meetings brought a lot of use cases, projects, R&D projects, but also industrial projects, and then ROS Conference Global Participation. Uh, generally speaking. So during this year, many use cases arose, mostly from R&D departments and also members of the community with proof of concepts. But through the time and in line with the maturity of the, of the framework, more and more prototypes of higher technology ready, readiness level appeared. And this effort had a great impact in the ROS community. Uh, well, do you know the, the MicroRoS website um, with, with detailed documentation tutorials? But this here we can see very clearly um, how the open, the open source community engagement in the MicroRoS repository. So here in the first chart, it shows the number of clones that we registered this last year in 2021. Um, we can see a steady growth. And in the second chart, we can see the pull request data since 2018, sorry, 17, to today. So, well, we see that there is engagement from open source developers, not related with the Ofera project, into the maintenance of micros. So this is in line with ensuring a long-term perspective of, of micros and ROS2 for embedded. Um, well, it, it, it also, the governance of the, of the microbus will be for sure more dynamic from now on. Uh, obviously, high level work on demos and tutorials were done, community demos using a wide range of microcontrollers and RTOSs, coding examples, videos, GitHub documentation and so on. There's a lot of material related to microbus out there. And of course, also, uh, all this work is being collected in scientific high level journals because it represents technical innovation indoors. And here I list some of the articles related. So, as a result, uh, during the last year, not just the community use cases were happening, but also professional prototypes. And there are already commercialized prototypes that are using MicroRoS framework and we are aware of many companies that are using MicroRoS for the for the products. Here we, we name Renesas, um, that is uh, the RA family microcontroller is supporting MicroRoS professionally and this is a key differentiator in the marketing strategy because it's the first and only microcontroller with professional support. Capra Robotics has launched in January the Kirkus prototype. It's available for purchase and um, uses MicroRoS and ROS2. Um, well, we, 
Usarium will launch a robot next month based on Microros also, and we hope to have Dominic here uh, to present uh, his product in the next embedded working group. And we are aware of many companies that are using Microros, and we are not aware of, of many more, <laughs> probably. So as final uh, slide, I want to present some highlights of which is the current status of the Microros framework. This is data from 2021. And regarding the community, given the small presence of embedded in robotics nowadays, because it is a very small niche, we recognize a quite impressive engagement, uh, 59 repositories, and the number of clones per month on average is around 50K, uh, 60 developers outside of Freeram, so this means 60 contributors. This is a very good number to give an idea of the community that was created around Microros. More than 700 users in Microros Slack channels. This is increasing. This was in 2021. Um, so Microros is um, official variant of ROS2 for microcontrollers, and we have proof of that in the industry and in the community. Um, in Aproxima, we provide services to help companies to adopt and adjust micro-ROS to the architecture. So we are aware of the um, increasing market share that this is uh, representing. Uh, here I, I put some logos, but there are many other companies that are using micro-ROS today and it is increasing because it, because it is actually covering actual needs in the market. So, um, as a summary, the idea is that during the last four years, Microros was driven by a European funded project. Now it is a reliable and complete framework that is being driven actually by the market itself and the needs of the companies. Therefore, the governance will be for sure more dynamic from now on. Um, well, to keep this community the most distributed and independent, the engagement of the, con of the contributors is, as you know, necessary. Um, a very good example of this is uh, the Diagnostics Framework Package that was initially maintained by, let me share it on the chat, was initially maintained by Bosch, um, but now it's maintained by Capra Robotics. Right, Bartholomew. Um, so these are good practices from open source users that contribute to keep an independent and autonomous uh, micro-ROS community. And I finished my presentation. I hope this has been useful. This was only to give an idea of the repercussion of microROS and the embedded in the embedded robotics community and how it is impacting in the industry today. Thank you. Um, I want to thank everyone for attending. I hope you find it interesting. Especially, I thank uh, Suraj for presenting uh, his uh, work. Uh, from his um, master thesis. And thank you, Jan, for, for bringing him. Um, we will be back next month with very interesting topics. So please stay tuned. And um, thank you very much. Have a good rest of the day.